Honourable Ministers, Speaker, Members of Parliament, let me start by thanking you for the honour you are giving me to address this House. Uh, you might feel a little bit of emotion in my voice, because apart from uh, the Italian Parliament, where I've served for seven years, and probably one other occasion, this is the first time I address a national parliament, and this is somehow special to me. I am really very happy to be here with you in Tirana today. I've planned this visit for a long time, somehow as a friend that is planning a family reunion. I feel particularly close to your country, not simply because my home country is so close to your coast, but for sure also for that. This country and this region belong in Europe. We share the same history, same culture, and the same future. For the past 25 years, I have always believed that you should also find your place inside our European Union. As an Italian minister and as a high representative of the European Union, I have always felt that this is as much in your interest as it is in ours, and that the challenge and the responsibility of our generation is to make this happen. All the Western Balkan countries in our European Union. This is what we will be asked in a few years' time, both me, all of you, all the ministers sitting just here. Are the Western Balkans more stable, more secure, reconciled than they used to be? Are they closer to being part of the European Union? We will be asked these questions because we can truly make a difference on this. We can work on many different things in our region and far away, but we have this very clear in mind. It's in the Western Balkans that the European Union and the European Union alone can really make the difference, and it is the Western Balkan countries that count for real for all the European Union in every single day of our citizens' life. This is something that truly lies in our hands, in your hands in particular, in the case of Albania. It's a shared responsibility that we must honor. As uh, the Prime Minister, Eddie, if you allow me, recently said, the European path is not about ready-made formulas that can or should be imposed on you or on any country, a top-down approach. Today I would like to talk about this, the road that we can, we must, I believe, travel together. There are so many challenges we share as Europeans, and none of us has all the answers we need in these very difficult times. We are not in school. Sometimes we use words that are not appropriate to our times and to the respect we owe to each other. There are no homeworks, no teachers, no pupils. We need together to work on common answers for common problems that are very difficult for all of us. Security, radicalization, migration, saving lives of so many refugees, protecting our societies, employment, economic growth, the present and the future of our youth. It is self-evident to anyone that is in good faith that we are, as we say in Italian, and I'm sure you might have the same wording or the same saying, that we are on the same boat. And we discussed this recently with your foreign minister and other foreign ministers of the region in Amsterdam at our Foreign Affairs Council, the informal part of it, how to find together solutions to problems that none of us can face alone. And I think the challenges the region, this region, is facing today making it self-evident that we are together in this. We need each other. We need to work together and we need to deliver 
together. Because only together we can deliver for the benefit of our people. In these years, Albania has moved forward and fast. 25 years ago, Albania was one of the most isolated states in the world and the world's third poorest country. Allow me to be a little bit irritual, if I can. You might remember a movie was out uh, some, well, quite a number of years ago, Whack the Dog, where in Washington DC a presidential team was uh, setting the stage for a fake crisis, a war, and chose Albania, I quote, because no one knows Albania. Well, that was not true in any case also at that time for the European Union and for sure not for my home country. But today, that movie would be simply impossible even to conceive. Albania is a NATO member and a candidate for membership in the European Union. This country, its international reputation, the life of your citizens has changed immensely. And the citizens of Albania have much bigger dreams wishes, aspirations, and hopes. And that's so good. That's so good. It's what is most precious you can have, a people that have dreams and hopes and aspirations. Such wishes and hopes put a huge responsibility on us, on us. It's not only on your shoulders, not only on our shoulders. The responsibility to be honest and clear-eyed when we look at the results achieved, the many results achieved, and also the way ahead. The five key priorities, you know by heart. Our country report for 2015 has shown that uh, in a number of areas there is still a lot of work to do, but also that the pace of reforms is steady and sustained. A number of important actions have been taken on structural reform, from the energy sector to the fight against informal labor markets, something we have some experience of also in many EU member states. The economy is now growing, maybe not as fast as your people would wish to see, but these are no easy times for our entire continent and, let me say, for the entire world. And our economies are very much interconnected worldwide. More efforts will be necessary on competitiveness to create jobs and a better business environment to attract more capital to Albania. Our connectivity agenda can support your work towards some of these goals. The Western Balkan countries need to get reconnected in all possible ways. First of all, among themselves, but also with the rest of Europe. Investing on infrastructure and on better rules will be vital. But the best investment we have to make is with our, our youth. And I say we have to make with our youth, here and in the European Union. True growth needs people capable and willing to work hard and change things, to match their dreams and aspirations with projects that make things change. And I know there is plenty of hardworking, entrepreneurial young Albanians who only need an opportunity to show what they are worth. This calls for better schools, better vocational training and higher education. Only this year the European Union will provide 30 million euros in budget support for Albania for creation of jobs, primarily for vocational training. Use all these opportunities and use them well because this is the best investment for not only the future of your country, but for its present as well, and for the present and the future of Europe somehow, all together. So we are already working together a lot and well on many different things. But it is time to move up to the next level. You want it, we want it, and we both need it. To do so, we all know that a deep and comprehensive reform of the judiciary is point number one in the agenda. Let us always keep in mind what judicial reform is about. I come from a country that knows something about that. It is first and foremost about the equality of all Albanians 
who must be treated fairly beyond their social status, their family name, their beliefs. But this is about your economy as well. It is about your companies, who should all play by the same rules. It is about foreign investors, who need to trust this country and its institutions at the maximum level possible. And it is about your democracy as well, and your citizens. They need to be fully confident in the state and in the institutions. They need to know that their success will depend only on good ideas and hard work, and only on that. It is for all these reasons that we attach such a high priority to this reform. This reform will open the way to a recommendation from the European Commission to start negotiations and for member states to take a positive decision on it. It can be a new beginning, the start of a new chapter of our shared history, a good one, one that delivers for our people. The judicial reform you are now discussing is one of the most comprehensive reforms proposed in the enlargement countries ever. Let me thank you, all of you, for that. The lawmakers and the experts of all different political backgrounds that have been involved in the impressive work done so far. The Venice Commission will soon give its final opinion on all the inputs they have received, so based on this, do the right thing. Adopt the reform. I know that all parties, governments and opposition are keen to move Albania forward on its path to EU membership. And I know very well that the citizens of your country expect you to deliver on this. So do it. I also know that your politics suffer from a deep lack of trust and of dialogue among the parties. Again, I come from a country that has some experience in that. Accepting your opponent as the legitimate actor, not an enemy to fight against even beyond the merit of what is discussed, this is crucial to any democracy. And yet, I know it is incredibly difficult to achieve, not just for Albania, but for all of us. For too long, my own country, Italy, has suffered from a similar disease. The political debate has too often been dominated by insults more than arguments. So I know the feeling. But let me tell you very clearly. There are interests that are more vital than those of your own political party. And these are those of your country and your people. And let me tell you that in many parts of Europe today, our democratic debate is not in the best shape ever. So this is not someone preaching from a position of strength. This is a common trend we all have to face. This is something we all need to work on in these difficult times for our democracies. Because we need politics and institutions to deliver, or our citizens will grow more and more disappointed and frustrated about our democracies, our institutions, and also our union. So we need to focus on what needs to be done and find the strength and the way to do it. This is particularly true in the Western Balkans. After the fall of the regimes, after the wars, too much time has already gone. We are now finally moving forward, everywhere in the region. Bosnia has just presented its application for membership. Serbia and Kosovo continue to be engaged in a meaningful dialogue that I see as a positive trend. And I would like to thank you, each and every of you, and some of you in particular, for the very positive role you have played in recent times around the region. This is extremely important, not only for the region, but for the European Union as such. You should be proud of that. In fact, the challenges we face tell us that reconciliation and dialogue cannot be delayed any further. Terrorism and radicalization are a threat that no one of us can ignore. And the issue of foreign terrorist fighters has not spared the region and Albania as well.
as well as many EU member states. Again, we are together in this. The current refugee crisis has so far affected your country only to a very limited extent. But we have all seen that the new routes can be opened quickly, with the first signs already there. And we need to work closely together on this as we are experiencing the negative consequences and the dangerous ones of a non-cooperative approach among neighbors. The present times and the times ahead don't look easy at all for all of us. But I am sure, not only because I am an optimist, that we can manage all of this successfully if we finally embrace a truly cooperative approach inside our societies, inside our parliaments, inside our institutions, and inside our union, and inside our continent. If we understand that the strength of my neighbor is my own strength. If we reject the forces that are trying to tear our societies apart and rather focus on what keeps us together as countries, as societies, as institutions, as Europeans. Whenever the EU engages with one of the enlargement countries, we are all focused on, let me call it this way, even if it's not correct, technicalities. The acquis, the reforms, the chapters. We too often forget what our union has to gain from enlargement and that this is a process that is vital for the countries that are going to enter the union as well as for the countries that are already in the union. If we forget this, we forget what enlargement is really about. It's about being together as a family and find together solutions to common problems and also, to be positive, at least a little bit, to profit together from opportunities that we can only together manage to build. Now, if you listen to certain European politicians today, you will get the feeling that our continent is about to collapse because of refugees and migrants. Personally, I have repeated many times that it is not the other who will tear our societies apart, but the fear of the other and the lack of capacity to manage diversity within our own societies. But we need to show our citizens that coexistence really works, that diversity is a point of strength and not of weakness. And let me tell you that the history of Albania constitutes a great example in this respect. For centuries, different religions and peoples have not just coexisted, but cooperated in harmony and respect. I was told a story that I hope it's true, otherwise you tell me, that Catholic families here used to keep a separate set of plates for their Muslim guests, out of respect for the culture and traditions of those they hosted. Is it true? Yes. This is a true treasure. Respect and understanding for the other. Respect as the ultimate principle of our culture and our values. And more, think of your own history of emigration, as I can think of our own history of emigration. We all remember very well the images of Albanians coming to Italy in the early 90s. For Italians, it was the first time they experienced immigration to the country, forgetting the emigration that Italians were experiencing in the previous decades, with very short memory. As you note all too well, many Italians at the time were scared. But look at what happened in the next 25 years. Look at all the success stories that Albanians, as well as Italians that had left Italy in the previous decades, have lived. Look at the boys and girls who have studied hard and who got a university degree, those who have risen to the middle class, those who have started their own business and helped their families back home as proud Albanians, as proud Europeans. They have enriched both their beloved homeland, my own beloved homeland, and the whole of Europe, going together. You know all of them better than I do. And you know better than I do those who have stayed here 
and dream to be part of a truly united Europe. This parliament, I believe, has a duty before them. It is your responsibility. I know very well it is also my responsibility to deliver on the follow-up. We are together in this. But now your country is looking at you, all of you. My invitation, my suggestion is this. Break free from the part of your past that blocks your future. Move this country forward. Bring it into the European Union. You owe it to Albania, to your people, and let me tell you, you owe it also to the whole of Europe. Thank you. Duke Palenderu, are the name in two I have a message Zoe Mogherini, the Duke of Rukua is a person in Sebashku, Nikosis, Dua Piu, Yoftoi, the Sand of the Tour, the Falende Zoe Mogherini, Chijeri Kon, the Kto, Momente Dvestira, first Egypt, Europe, first Sielto, message, Miafter Sishme.